today we're gonna pit three popular chefs against each other to see which one makes the best pizza on all of YouTube. Each of these personalities has their own strengths, their own specialties, and their own ethos on food and cooking. On the card today, we got Brian Lagerstrom, Claire Saffitz, and Kenji Lopez-Alt. All right, first on the docket is Claire Saffitz. She might consider herself a dessert person, but the lady can certainly get down on the savory side too. She's a very talented cook. Now I chose to make her pan pizza recipe because it's racked up nearly 400K views on YouTube and the people seem to really like it. Not to mention her mantra is kind of all about like easy, approachable, yet still sort of gourmet cooking. So I think this pan pizza recipe kind of embodies all of that. It's super simple and there's a low bar to entry. All right, let's start with the dough. So Claire's recipe is actually a collaboration with King Arthur Baking Company, which is kind of cool because I love King Arthur. I use their flowers all the time. It's gonna be a focaccia-like dough. Uh, we basically just gotta mix it now. We're gonna start with warm H2O, olive oil, yeast, salt, and all-purpose flour. Just gonna mix this all up until it comes together. We still have some dry spots in this dough. It's not fully kneaded. And that's okay, because this is a no-need recipe. We're basically gonna fold the dough over itself four times every five minutes for the next 20 minutes until this thing kind of looks smoother and shinier. Then we're gonna pop it in the fridge and let it go overnight. Check that out, look how nice and smooth that is now. We did not need that one bit, we just folded it a few times. You're just gonna ball things up, pop it in a sealable container or a situation like we have here with a dinner plate and a bowl. And this is gonna go in the fridge for one to two days. All right, one or two days have passed. You sure about that? JK, I made this uh, two days ago. Pan pizza. Here we have a nice cast iron pan and some olive oil. We're basically just gonna lube things up here nice and liberally. Make sure that the side walls are coated as well as that base. And then we're gonna take our dough here and I'm gonna carefully remove it so that it's kind of in one piece. And from here, you just dimple it into the corners of the actual pan, just like you would any other pan pizza. If it stretches on you and kind of pulls back, gives you a hard time, just let it rest for five minutes and then come back at it and continue playing your piano. We need to let this proof in the pan for about two hours roughly until it comes to nearly halfway in the pan. It's that easy. All right, two hours have elapsed. Look at this beauty. She active. In Claire's video, she says that she prefers a canned marinara sauce. And I'm a yeah. big fan of a store-bought like marinara oh, cool. type sauce. Which makes our life a lot easier. So here I just have a nice high quality marinara-like sauce that I bought from the stove. Oh my God, dude, my hands are so lubed. Yeah. Now something that Claire does is she uses mozzarella cheese, but she doesn't just put the sauce on and the cheese. We're actually gonna start by adding a nice layer of mozzarella cheese here before we add our sauce. And according to uh, David Tamarkin, who is the representative and the editor over at King Arthur Baking, he says this just helps keep the sauce, I mean, the pizza less gloopy from being too saturated with the sauce, which I can agree with to an extent. We're going to now take our wonderful homemade sauce that I spent hours slaving over, and we're just gonna dollop this around the entire pizza. An interesting way to sauce a pie. I don't hate it. All right, that kind of looks like Claire's pizza. Then we're just gonna finish with some remaining cheese, but we need to make sure that we fill these crevices here. So I'm going to really make sure that there's cheese leaning between the dough and the side walls of the pan so that we can achieve that nice little Frico crust. Yeah, that's looking nice. That is literally as easy as pie. Pizza pie. We're gonna cook this for 18 to 24 minutes on the bottom rack, then move it up to the top rack to finish off and sort of get crisp on the top. Pizza stone on, so we're gonna pop it right on the stone. And now we play the waiting game. And this thing's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. I don't think we even need to hit that on the top. It looks beautifully cooked. Time to finish Claire's masterpiece. We got a couple of things here. We're gonna start with some good old fashioned chili oil. I ran out of red pepper flakes, so we have chili oil. Oh, yes. She said she ran out of chili flakes, so she used chili oil, and TBH, chili oil is really good on pizza, so we're gonna run that around there a little bit, kind of drizzle it all over. We got some fresh green Genovese basil here. We're just gonna kind of let that rain on a bit. Fantastic. And some microplaned Parmigiano Reggiano, not crumbles, microplaned. Rain on the chest. Boom, bang, click, pow. Gorgeous. 
Oh yeah, look at that. We got that wonderful Frico we were going for here with that nice pale fermented dough. You can tell by the air bubbles. This thing is soft, just like your bullet. So hilariously enough, Claire opts to use scissors to cut her pizza, so we're gonna give that a go. Wish me luck. Oh my God, it's like cutting through air. <laughs> super airy. How's that undercarriage? This tends to happen when you use just olive oil. The, ke the crust gets super delicate and almost golden. And look at that, look at that cross section right there. That's some nice airy dough. We like that. It smells great. All right, this looks fantastic. We're gonna set this aside and get going on our next contestant. Next up, we have a repeat contender and the current belt holder of the fried chicken sandwich category, Brian Lagerstrom. Now, I chose to make Brian's Chicago tavern style pizza because according to his video, he grew up in the Chicago land area, which so happens to be where we're standing right now. Brian has a bunch of friends who used to work in pizzerias and has a lifetime of experience eating this pizza, so I thought that it would be fitting to make it to represent him. Not to mention, Brian is a super well-rounded, versed baker and seems to make some pretty tasty pies. So yeah, let's get into it. Into a food processor, flour, yeast, salt, and a little bit of butter. Now we're just gonna pulse this all up. We want that butter to kind of crumble into our flour. Now we can start adding the water. I'm gonna run the machine and pour this in. We're gonna run this for 20 seconds now. Plop this out onto the counter and give it a knead for about 45 seconds to a minute, according to Brian's recipe. Don't want to overwork this dough. We don't want gluten formation. We don't want it to pop up. This is a cracker crust style pizza. We're gonna shape this into a ball. Then we're gonna just take this whole little beautiful dough ball, pop it in a bowl, cover it up, and let this sit out on the counter for about two and a half hours till it doubles or nearly doubles in size. Okay, Brian's sauce is interesting. When we talk about Chicago-based sauces, they're gonna be richer, thicker, a little more full-bodied and spiced, which generally means that the sauce is also cooked and reduced down. But Brian is going for an uncooked sauce. Now, Brian decided to use tomato sauce, which is an interesting play, because this is basically already cooked down a little bit. It's seasoned with salt and it's got some spices in it, so it's kind of ready for you out of the can. We got our tomato sauce. Whoa. <laughs> some tomato paste. Sugar, pinch of kosher, and a small pinch of oregano. All we gotta do is whisk this up, and this is literally our sauce. I mean, look at this stuff. It's like a viscous pile of goop. It even like smells super rich, and we didn't even cook it. Cool, all right, finished. <sighs> so for toppings, we're gonna use one of Brian's favorite combos. He calls it the B-Boy. Pepperoni, pepperoncini, oregano, parmesan, lots of cheese, Lots of sauce. It's basically pepperoncini, which we'll talk about later, and this stuff, which is natural casing pepperoni. This is the same brand that he used in his video. He says that it's real food and that he likes it more than, say, those little kind of like ball sack bags of pepperonis that I actually really like. So we're gonna cut this up nice and thin and use it on our pizza. And he says to eat every 10th pepperoni as a command, so I'm gonna take his word on that. Oh my God, I'm gonna have heartburn by the end of this log. I'm getting the pep sweat. People always talk about meat sweat like it's a bad thing. It might be like the highest tier, the highest caliber of sweat. Name a better sweat than meat sweats. All right, Pepsi done. Let's check on our dough. Okay, time has elapsed. Mm, it smells kind of fermenty, which is pretty cool. It smells pretty tangy for just sitting out at room temperature. This is not a multi-day dough, remember? So this recipe makes enough for two pizzas. So we are going to cut this in half. We're going for roughly 265 grams here. We're just gonna take these, form them into balls here. Gorgeous. Tavern style pizza. This is a low hydration dough, so it's pretty easy to uh, roll out and work with. You're not gonna probably need any flour or anything like that. I'm just gonna kind of push this out here, like so, kind of create a nice little disc. Then I'm gonna use my rolling pin to try to make as even as a little circle as I can. All right, so we're at about six, maybe eight inches here. That's great. What's interesting about this is Brian hand shapes his tavern pizza, which you don't really see too often with the style. Usually it's rolled out super thin for consistency or put through a dough um, roller. This is his technique. We're going for a 12 inch pizza here. So you kind of like pull right here the dough with your hand and you, you pull it and you put it aside, right? Move it, pull it, great, move it, pull it. 
secret. Oh, look at that, exactly 12 inches. I think I so happen to have the same exact peel as Brian, which is funny. Something that's really important with tavern style pizza is the use of cornmeal. It's kind of a Chicago thing. He doesn't put any cornmeal in his dough, but he does put it all over the board. These are going to kind of work as ball bearings to help your pizza slide on and off the peel easily, but it also does add flavor, which is very important with this tavern. We're gonna lay on our sauce. This can go all over the pizza edge to edge. All right, so we're gonna start off with a little bit of maz all over this thing pepperoni pieces, just kind of scatter them all over. Little pepperoncini, these are just uh, pickled Greek style, semi-spicy peppers. I actually really like these pepperoncini. All right, we have our pizza stone set up towards the bottom. We're gonna pop that on the back and drag it through. That's gonna be at 550 for about 12 minutes. Magnifique. And that, my friends, is the B-Boy. Look at that beauty. Oh yeah, that's what we're looking for. Crispity, crunchity, cooked through with the cornmeal kind of like in, bejeweled in the crust. This looks fantastic, I will say. Check this out. I like a corner adjacent piece. That is nice. All right, Brian L. Last up, we have the heavy hitter, Kenji Lopez all. I actually had the chance to meet this dude this summer in Seattle. Uh, it was pretty cool for me. He probably has no recollection of it, but you know, don't worry, that's not gonna sway things at the judging table. This guy's body of work is vast. I mean, he's written a couple award-winning cookbooks. I know he's opened up a restaurant. Um, he's just basically kind of like the daddy of internet food science. I chose Kenji's New York pizza vid because it's one of his most viewed. In typical fash, let's start with the dough. All right, just like Brian, Kenji uses a food processor. We're gonna start with our flour. This is interesting, dough conditioner, a little bit of earl, and salt. Kenji recommends using bread flour, but he also used all-purpose flour in his video. I would normally use bread flour, but I am out of bread flour right now. And we're going by his video, not his actual written recipe on SeriousEats.com. We're gonna pop this on and give it a pulse. All right, here we just have some tepid temperatured water. We're gonna add our yeast in and just mix this around. With our machine running, we're gonna add in the water, the yeasted water. And we're gonna let it run for about 30 to 50 seconds to sort of develop gluten. Now for New York style, Kenji recommends anywhere between 60 to 65% hydration. As you can see, this is a much wetter dough than the Tavern, or it's actually probably about the same as Claire's. Pretty wet, pretty sticky. It has been kneaded, and now all we need to do is form it into a ball. Oh, it's a nice little warm, toasty little guy. Then pop it in a container, and let it sit out on the counter for two hours. Okay, look at this. We got a nice, gassy, NYC style dough. Just deflate it. Ooh, it smells alcoholic, and it's so much easier to work with because of that dough conditioner that just kind of speeds up the gluten development and all that. Fantastic. Now we're gonna pop this back into the container and let it rise for another two hours. Okay, so Kenji's sauce on his website is different than the video that we're going off of. To keep it fair, I'm going off of all of these people's videos. In his video, he states that the sauce he uses is straight up San Marzano tomatoes and a little bit of salt. So that's what we're gonna use today. A little pinch of kosher, mixy mixy. We have our puffed up New York style dough ball. This is enough for one 16 inch pizza. Here's the challenge. My outdoor oven is exactly 16 inches wide. I have the Gosney dome. In Kenji's video, he uses the, I think it's the Uni Coda. I don't know the actual model name. Doesn't matter. What does matter is that we're gonna try to build the biggest New York style pizza possible that my oven can accommodate. So let's, let's shape this dough. Dough ball, pop it in. That's nice. Bring it right here. Kind of push that air out into that crust. You feel free to pinch out any of these air bubbles here. That dough conditioner makes this all-purpose flour a lot stronger and more stretchable, which is big because all-purpose flour is not going to be as strong as bread flour. Can do a little New York pizza pie. Let's go. Okay, and it broke. <laughs> it's okay. All right. We got our little pie here set on our rack. Time to build New York sauce. 
Make sure not to put a ton of sauce in the middle. This is full fat mozzarella, same that we've been using. Kenji put his, uh, his basil on before he baked, which is interesting. A little bit of salt, olive oil. Pop that in the back. This should be about a four minute bake. I think we have liftoff. Woo! Heck yeah, dude. Heck yeah, dude, let's go. A little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano. And a little more oregi. All right, let's bring this upstairs. Look at that crust red layer as it tapers down into that classic, super, super thin, floppy New York. Got some nice color on the undercarriage. Smells good for being a single day dough. All right, we have everybody's submissions. It's finally time to taste these things. Where should we begin? I think I'm gonna go with the with the pan the pan pizza right in front of me with the, the, the pan pizza. Mm. Mm. Very soft, very tender. Not too much chew to it. Very focaccia like and good. But you gotta try the frico bite. Mm -hmm. Next up, I think I'm gonna have to do Brian's. Yeah, it's a nice thin crust pizza. Last but not least, New York. The flop is nice. I'll take that. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did like the video, give it a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Again, 
I'm one guy. Which was your favorite pizza? Let us know in the comments below. The best way to support the channel is by donating to the grocery fund. Helps me pay for all of these like, you know, five pizzas and so on. Regardless of if you can support financially or not, come say what up in the Discord. We be chatting, we be having a grand old time. I think that's pretty much all I got for you. So until next time, ciao.